Back straight away. Dale Earnhardt now leads the second place car, Darrell Waltrip, by 24.9, 25 seconds. There is a 25 second difference between Earnhardt and the rest of the field. Absolutely incredible. Running third and having a good day today is Brett Bodine as we take a look at the leaderboard. Davey Allison is fourth and Jeff Bodine is fifth. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. It will be a scheduled pit stop. Let's go down now to Rick Brenner. Here comes Dale Earnhardt into the pits, his crew over the side of the wall. They're going to be changing the right side tires, taking on a full load of fuel. And Earnhardt taking some liquid refreshment. It's a very hot day, but the interesting thing is he is going to get out of this pit stop on a green flag condition, and he is not going to lose the lead. That's the amazing thing. There he goes, and he is lost in just a little over 20 seconds. How about that? amazing what Dale Earnhardt has done today as we now have six cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt still is the leader and Darrell Walter obviously able to close that gap up some but Walter still got to make a pit stop Jerry. Well they still have to come in a Walter fan, Brett Bodine, those two cars uh, running, being shown up front uh, up front now as they're now slowing. Walter's car slowing over in turn four and he will make an entry on the pit road as the Budweiser car, that's the Pontiac of Darrell Waltrip, makes its way down pit road for his scheduled stop. There's Earnhardt coming down out of turn four down the, down the front straightaway as Darrell Waltrip brings his car skittering to a halt. Well, Darrell Waltrip again down on pit road. He will take on right side tires, as you see here. And Waltrip having an interesting run today. I know he thinks his car is running good, but it's got to be frustrating when you got a guy doing what Dale Earnhardt has done so far today. Pretty good pit stop for Waltrip and the crew. A little over 19 and a half seconds for Eddie Jones and that Pontiac. It's a 1978 Pontiac Ventura with a prototype engine on board. Moves back on the racetrack. And here's Brett Bodine, the young 27-year-old Chemung, New York driver who currently is second in the points. Here is Bodine in the pits for his schedule stop. And we go down to Glen Jarrett. Brett Bodine pulls the Thomas Brothers Country Ham Oldsmobile to a stop. They are changing right side tires, as has everyone so far. Again, no time for a chassis adjustment, just gas and tires. Having a little bit of trouble on the right front tire. Seems to be a little bit slow right now. The car is filled with gas. He's down. They have to wait till the air hose is out of the way. That's now Brett missed the gear taking off. Looks like he's having some problems. He finally gets underway very, very slowly, though. That is costly. You have to make that time up on the racetrack. Also on pit road now, Davey Allison, who has been one of the leaders. Davey Allison in car 28 brings his car to a stop. And we see the, what is the Harry Renier team going to work on that car? That's right. Now keep an eye on Allison. There's the Joey Knuckles crew. This is a Winston Cup crew, first class crew, and they're one of the best at that. Joey Knuckles, the crew chief who will be with that team next year, has already got the right front tire change. They have the car already fueled and gassed. They're ready to move the car off the jacks and move it down and away. That's the car on 98 of Larry Pollard. Here's a 28 of Davey Allison off the jack. Pretty good pit stop. It took a little longer to get fuel in the car, but the pit stop itself, the tire change, was extremely fast at about 17 seconds. Well, a good stop for Davey Allison. Hopefully he'll be able to gain some ground now on the rest of the field. Davey Allison with a strong run today, and also his dad, Bobby Allison, in this race has also had a strong run here today, but uh, so far the story has been Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt is now again posted as the leader. Jeff Bodine is posted in second place. Jack Ingram in third, Tommy Houston fourth, and Larry Pearson now posted in fifth position, but a number of those cars have yet to make pit stops. We'll be back with more of the racing in Charlotte in a moment. Perfect fall afternoon. Dale Earnhardt is still your leader. There is a car in trouble on the back straightaway. Out of turn three, there is Jeff Bodine's car. I on believe he's out of fuel. I think he is, too, and I think they may have stretched it a little bit too far. Robert G., the car owner, and the car, that's the car that Tim Richmond drove to victory here back in May, and now Jeff Bodine may be out of fuel. The car coughing and sputtering down pit road. And it might be tough to get it restarted, too. We'll have to see. Let's go down now to the Bodine pit and Rich Brenner. Okay, Mike. Okay, Mike Hodgwood. We are down here in the Jeff Bodine pits, and it seemed like this crew was on uh, standby attention forever. They are sticking some uh, ether into the carburetor to get it started again. Apparently, he ran out of gas. So while they're refueling it, they're also putting on right side tires. It's been a disappointing day so far for Jeff Bodine. 
17 second pit stop for Bodai, but that doesn't reflect the time he lost on the racetrack, Mike, because the car actually slowed coming off of turn two. He rolled the entire length of the back stretch and around turn three and four. It probably cost him well over a minute and a lot of time on the racetrack. Also down on pit road now is Donnie Allison, who has had a good run today after winning the qualifying race earlier this morning. And this is really going to shake up the standings and who's on the lead lap and who's not. And it's really going to hurt Jeff Bodine. And once we get all these pit stops out of the way here, we'll sort the feed fields back out for you. But I can tell you that with 72 laps complete, <laughs> that the, the number one position is not going to change a bit. The rest of it may shift up and down a little bit. But Dale Earnhardt is still going to be the leader of this race, and he's going to be the leader by a whole bunch. Right now posted in the second position is the 0-1 car. Was well, car number 11 is posted on the scoreboard at 01. I started to say there's not a 01 in the race. That's awfully strange. But that is the 11 car. Now they've changed it correctly. That's Jack Ingram. And Jack is yet to pit, but they're getting ready to bring him in next time by as uh, their crew down there, Roy Lee Jones, uh, are down waiting the crew to bring that car number 11, the Skull car. And that's the Pontiac for Ingram. He should be making his pit stop this time. He ran 72 or 73 laps. That's quite a way on one tank of fuel, 22 gallons. So Ingram ready for his routine. Stuff. Well, I just saw Jimmy Hensley come down on pit road. He stopped and they waved him on. He's had some interesting pit stops here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. You remember back in May, he's the guy that had the gas can stuck in his car as he rode it around the racetrack. And uh, Hensley apparently with some problems, he came down. And now Jack Ingram, as you see, in the school car number 11. They call him Iron Man Jack. He is down on pit road and the right side where they're going to change tires. Let's go down now to Glen Jarrett. And Jack Ingram has brought the Skull Bandit number 11 Oldsmobile into the pits for a routine stop. They are changing right side tires, filling up with fuel. Jack seems to be pretty calm in there. Doesn't look to be nothing out of the ordinary. They come to the left side now, having a little bit of trouble with the fuel. That's unusual that it takes longer to fuel the car than it does to change the tires. So the guys changed the tires, did a fantastic job there. He's down and away. Well, they don't have fuel gauges on this car, but imagine if they did. Ingram's, uh, like the rest of them, will be pretty close to eat out here by this uh, time of the race. Like this like the song says, running on empty. They he probably used about 21.8 gallons. I'm sure they realized they put two full cans in the car. And that does take a while. 73 laps complete. Dale Earnhardt is the leader. We'll come back to more racing in Charlotte after these words from your local stations. Hey, apparently there is some debris or something on the racetrack. Uh, NASCAR officials have seen it, and the yellow flag is out. The field will slow down with Dale Earnhardt out in front. Bobby Allison has moved into second place still on the lead lap as we take a look at the leaders. Larry Pearson is being posted as the third place car, but I believe he still has to pit, Jerry Punch. Well, both Allison and Pearson, Bobby Allison and Larry Pearson, have yet to make their pit stop, so they should be coming in now. This caution will be a break for both those drivers. Earnhardt has already pitted. Ottinger has already pitted, as it's Waltrip. So now everyone will make an entry on the pit road here. It looks like feeding time at the zoo. Here's Earnhardt in, Brett Bodine. All the leaders are in the pits. It's interesting to note here that most of them probably will go now to the left side and try to match up the tires just a little bit more because on the green flag, they're only able to change two tires and this way kind of get a semblance of a match set of race tires and be able to go out there and really try to gain some ground on that car, Dale Earnhardt. That's exactly what they will do, Mike. You saw the Goodrich crew changing left side tires for Earnhardt and here's the all-pro crew there. That's the auto your car who had such a strong run early on changing left side under nascar rules you're only allowed to make a two tire change under caution you can change two left or two right or whatever any combination but only two tires so under green you can change as many as you want to and now Ottinger a little bit slower getting out fortunately they're under caution so it doesn't really hurt him but uh, now they're pushing the bobby allison car they get that car fired so i'm sure allison probably ran out of fuel and that caution was a break for him well, we have we are working now lap 80, and again we are under caution. And here come another batch of cars headed down pit road. It gets kind of crowded when you get down to caution like this. This is the first caution of the day. Uh, there was a race record 11 cautions set in 1984, and the way this race has gone to now, uh, it doesn't look like we might see that today. But there's still plenty of racing yet left, and we might see anything so far. And Larry Pearson making his first pit stop of the day, the Chattanooga 2 Chevrolet Nova. He has a V8 engine in the car, a Ben Barnes prepared V8, and he's got his brothers Ricky and Eddie down there, as well as Dad David helping to pit the car. They will come in and make a two-tire change, right side tires. He's now down and away. Pretty good stop. And in fact, they were able to go quite a way on fuel in the case they may be a, a contender yet before this day's over. 
Well, Larry Pearson, who, as we mentioned early, was dropping back a bit in his crew, didn't seem concerned at all about it, and with good reason, because Larry Pearson is now well up there behind Dale Earnhardt and is still on the lead lap, has a full tank of fuel, and really made up some ground by being able to pit under the caution. Well, just the name Pearson in itself indicates that you, know, you got to think about the Silver Fox, Dave, David, his father, who never showed his hand early in a race, always sort of sat back, took care of the car, didn't use it, didn't use it up, and he knows his son Larry has a chance to win this point championship. He's six points ahead of Brett Bodine and some 79 in front of Ingram. So if he can hang on this race and two or three more, he can take home around $60,000 in that coveted Bush Grand National Championship. That wouldn't be bad. Let's go down now to the Jeff Bodine pit. Rich Brenner is standing by. Well, as we mentioned on the last pit stop for Jeff Bodine, it has not been a particularly good day for him at this point. He has already been in once. The hood is going up. He's back out there. I'm standing with Rick Hendrick, the car owner. And Rick, what's the problem with Jeff's car? I noticed he's just coming right back in. Not problem. Uh, we're trying to fix it. We've changed the ignition boxes. We're not sure that's the only problem. We're changing left side tires to go back out. We'll change the ignition box again on this. Might be a plug wire. We don't know yet. Well, to say the least, it's been a frustrating day, but it's been Dale Earnhardt's day so far. Sorry. Uh, it's been a frustrating day so far, but at least it's been Dale's day. Yeah, we've run awful good here before, but that, that looks like it's going to be our day. Okay, that's Rick Hendrick, the car owner of Jeff Bedine's number 15 car, having ignition problems, and it's been a bad day so far. Well, that's certainly uh, bad news not for a lot of fans of Jeff Bodine as he got quite a cheer in the driver introductions earlier today. And uh, Dale Earnhardt uh, looks like one of the strong competitors as Bodine was sitting on the front row. is just maybe going a little bit by the wayside as uh, Bodine will just have to try to hang in there for the rest of the day. 81 of 200 laps are complete. Your leader is Dale Earnhardt running second. Now is L.D. Ottinger, who ran second early in this race. Bobby Allison is third. Larry Pearson fourth. And Daryl Waltrip in car number 17 is running fifth. The pace car is headed down pit road. And Jerry, we are ready to go back to green racing. Let's see what happens now that the rest of the field has caught up with Dale Earnhardt. And it's Davey Allison who is right on his bumper. Davey is posted now as a lap down, I believe. It's going to try to get that lap back. Allison in car number 28 right behind Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt again. As soon as he punched the throttle, just shot right out past the rest of the field. Allison needs to be the only car that's able to hang with him. Well, yesterday in practice, Davey Allison was extremely strong. He went by Ingram and went by uh, Brett Bodine and Jeff Bodine in the car he's driving, the red, white, new one car number 28. But today it's been a little bit different. Now we'll see if that tire Oh, my. As Touching the wall in turn four was Jack Ingram. Oh, uh, Ingram got a Charlotte stripe on the right side of his uh, car. That Oldsmobile of Jack Ingram. He's running back in third spot. That could have been disastrous for his point championship hopes. And there's Ingram in that green and white numeral number 11, five time national champion, just tapped the wall, got it straight and back out. A pretty good job of driving, Mike. That's what uh, years of experience will do for you because a lot of the inexperienced drivers, that happens to them, and then they're all over the racetrack. Well, Earnhardt has shot right back out to at least a six, seven car length lead. 10 car lengths now over Davey Allison, who is a lap down. And running second is L.D. Ottinger, a good 25, 30 car lengths now behind the leader, Dale Earnhardt. So the caution may have bunched them up together, but it didn't take Dale Earnhardt long to get back out in front and be dominating again. They made an unscheduled pit stop just a moment ago. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt continues to pull away. Well, it was a costly stop for Jack Ingram, who has a lot of ground to make up the points championship. And here he comes back down pit road again. It looks like another unscheduled stop, and whatever the problem was then, they didn't fix it. But uh, Ingram really tapped the wall pretty hard there coming out of turn four. And they have Harry Gantt standing by in the Ingram pits. Gantt now buckling up his helmet and possibly will get a driver change. We mentioned earlier that Ingram had not been feeling well, had been under the weather, and there is Gantt standing behind the wall with his helmet on as Rich Brenner now standing by in the Jack Ingram pit. That's right, Jerry. Uh, we're here with, uh, in Jack Ingram's pits, uh, there is some uh, damage to the white front door panel. That happened when he tagged the wall up in turn four for a while there. It looked like Harry Gant was getting ready to go into the car. Harry's got his helmet. He's standing here right now, and he's uh, speaking with some people in the pits. Harry, it looks like you're getting ready to go in and race for Jack. What's the problem? Well, it's a little bit hot. He had run in a couple weeks, and uh, he hurt his rib uh, a while back, and it's not 
car got healed yet. That is uh, bothering Ralph Smart on, his, on, uh, on the racetrack here, the seat rubbing his side. Well, I know you're getting ready to go in. Are you definitely going to go in, or are you here just on a standby basis? I'm just basis? standing by. He said to stand by. You know, he let me know if he needed me to stand by, so I've been watching the race. They come down and said, it's, uh, I better come up here and stand by. He's having a little trouble. How bad is the damage to the uh, right side of the Okay, back up to you guys. Okay, that's the story from Harry, and I expect we will see him for this day's out. You know, the last time Ingram won on a Super Speedway was back at Darlington in 85 last year, and the same thing happened. He got ill in the car, and Harry Gant climbed in the car about halfway through the race down there and rode the car into victory lane. So uh, I know that Ingram would like to finish the race. They call him the Iron Man because he's so competitive, and he's such a hard charger, but he hasn't been feeling well, and he was injured in a crash earlier in the year, so maybe he'll have to climb out, and maybe they're going to bring him down pit road again and we'll see if Harry Gant will climb in the car. Well Harry is uh, stepping up and uh, we'll see now if we do make a driver change down there as here comes Jack Ingram. There are only five cars on the lead lap right now. This field is really strung out. Only five as you see the crew members sticking their head in trying to find out from Jack if he's okay and can continue and apparently there are some other serious problems on the car other than just the driver. Well, they saw one of the crew chiefs, Owen Edwards, stick his head in the window and look at the gauges, and that's never a good indication when Harry or when uh, Jack Ingram thinks something may be going wrong with the gauges. You know, Ingram, the winningest driver in Bush Grand National history in the past five years, he's won uh, over 40 races. In fact, he's won 30 times, I should say. The next uh, most active driver, that's uh, uh, would be Tommy Houston with 13 wins. So Ingram certainly has been a dominant driver. He's won five times this year, all of the short tracks, and they finished the service on his car and put him back on the track. 49 year old Jack Ingram out of Asheville, North Carolina. Here are the five cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt, L.D. Ottinger, Bobby Allison in car 85, Larry Pearson in 21, and Darrell Walterman in 17. 92 of the 200 lap run, and we just have five cars on the lead lap. Now, that is surprising in a race like this, as as many competitive cars as we have out here. It is surprising, and I think that uh, a lot of people felt early that it would be a lot closer than it is right now. There are a couple of cars going by. This is Brett Bodine uh, being shown on the screen. Bodine back there in the not hard to find that Daglo fluorescent orange double zero for Bodine on the racetrack. Well, whoever had a tough time finding that car before is not going to have a tough time picking it out now, I can tell you. I think you call that color rocket red. Whatever it is, it is really bright and uh, stands, stands out out there. Let's go down now, back down to Pitt Road and Rich Brenner. Well, Mike, there's a tremendous frustration here in the car number 11, the Iron.